Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and I'm a photographer. And today I'm going to take a photo walk with the Canon R8 camera and the kit lens, 24 to 50 millimeter kit lens. And in my back, I also have the 28 millimeter f2.8 prime lens. Big thanks to Canon Finland for lending me this camera so I can try it out and share my experiences with you guys. This is not going to be a camera review. I'm just going to share my experiences uh, after a photo walk or during a photo walk on this beautiful autumn day here in Helsinki, Finland. This kit lens is incredibly lightweight and quite compact also for a full frame lens. However, it's completely made of plastic. Even the mount is plastic and usually a plastic mount is a very good sign of a budget lens. However, it's so lightweight that it's a joy to carry around on a casual photo walk like this and I think most users will be happy with this lens as long as they understand the limitations. The maximum aperture goes from 4.5 to 6.3 so this is not any kind of a low light wonder so if you need to capture some action in low light this is not the lens or if you are looking for some delicious uh, beautiful smooth bokeh this is not the lens and talking about bokeh this camera has a budget the mechanical shutter that only uses electronic first curtain and that can potentially ruin your bokeh if you are shooting on wide apertures but for that you'd need something like a, a 50 millimeter f1.2 or a similar lens you can save your bokeh by switching over to uh, the electronic shutter, then you don't have any problems. And a heavy lens or big lens like a 51.2 would probably not be an ideal combo with this anyway. This Canon R8 camera body is really super tiny and lightweight, especially if you consider it's a full frame camera. But the ergonomics are still not too compromised. I have two command dials so I have a full control over aperture and shutter speed if I'm shooting on manual mode and if I'm shooting on aperture or shutter priority I have a, a dial, a dedicated dial for the shutter or aperture and then another dial for the exposure compensation that's really nice the this thing the d-pad here it's just a d-pad it's not a dial at all um, a third dial would be really nice for ISO but uh, it's not really necessary. There's also no joystick to move the autofocus point around but I don't think that is necessary at all. I use the same uh, with this Canon I use the same autofocus method as I'm using with my Sony camera. I have the focus point in the middle of the frame and I have the continuous autofocus and tracking enabled so I just uh, point the uh, focus point where I want to focus and then I can recompose and uh, go back and forth and the focus stays where it is so I don't think the joystick is so necessary anymore now that we have uh, such good uh, reliable autofocus systems that can track and focus so reliably so the ergonomics are not compromised too much in this camera to keep it small. However, the battery is really small and the SIPA ratings for this battery are quite miserable. Of course, in real life, the ratings or the, the shots that you get are usually a lot more than the SIPA ratings suggest, but still the battery is really small in this camera. And I guess that's one of those compromises Canon chose to make to keep the body size as small as it is and also there's no ibis inside this camera and that's also I think probably another compromise because the ibis probably would make this camera body uh, bigger than it is for photography I don't think it's such a big deal the lack of ibis most Canon lenses have optical stabilizer like for example this kit lens but if you're shooting video then uh, IBIS would be nice. This camera has electronic stabilizer for that, but of course electronic stabilizer also crops always a little bit, so it's in that sense it's not ideal. Despite of the tiny or small size, I guess you can't really call this tiny, but it's very compact. Uh, despite of that, the grip is substantial and the camera feels really good in my hand, but I suppose if you have really big hands, this could feel a slightly 
too small uh, in that case. Uh, but I can get a really nice grip on the camera and it's comfortable to carry around even for longer periods of time. Also the both command dials, they are right at my fingertips. The power switch is slightly awkward with my in index finger. Uh, I try to switch off the camera after each picture because I'm a little bit worried about the battery life. I only have one battery with me and I wouldn't like to drain the battery um, before I'm finished with my photo walk today. I can't say much about the image quality yet because <laughs> today is the first time I'm actually using this camera. I took a couple of test pictures at home when I was trying out the controls and uh, setting up the menus and all that. Uh, but I understand the sensor is the same 24 megapixel full frame sensor as inside the Canon R6 Mark II. So the image quality should be pretty much as good as it can be uh, with the full frame 24 megapixel sensor today. The range of this kit lens goes from 24 to 50 millimeters. And I guess this is designed for those potential smartphone shooters who might switch over to a full-frame camera. This covers pretty much the same or similar range than most smartphones. Of course, some smartphones have also an ultra-wide camera and some have a, a longer telephoto lens, some sort of telephoto lens. But in general, smartphones embrace wide-angle lenses and many smartphone users are used to shooting on quite wide uh, lenses so I think this can be a smart move uh, from Canon to to come up with a lens kit lens like this. I've been walking here in Seurasari outdoor area here in Helsinki and it looks like we don't have a proper fall colors yet here in the southern Finland. I suppose it takes a few more weeks and uh, some frosty nights when the temperature drops below zero Celsius and uh, after that usually those fall colors come into full bloom and then it can look quite pretty also here in the south of Finland. But not every, every day, every year, sometimes we don't get proper fall colors. It depends so much on the weather and all the weather conditions. I really like using this Canon R8 camera. It feels good in my hand, the ergonomics are good, but somehow the camera body feels a little bit too plasticky to my taste. Not like cheap quality inferior plastic, but just a little bit too plasticky to my taste and what I would like from my camera. I guess it's acceptable because this is Canon's entry-level full frame, full frame camera, but still I'd like my camera to feel a little bit more, I don't know, substantial. I think this kit zoom lens works so well in this outdoor recreational area that I'm gonna stick to this lens for the rest of the photo walk and forget the 28 millimeter prime lens. If I was walking in the city and taking some street photos then I would probably prefer the the prime lens. It works so much better for that kind of photography but here I think the flexibility of the zoom lens is so much nicer than a prime lens. I can now confirm that the battery capacity is not that great. I've been walking for about two, two and a half hours and I've taken, what, uh, 109 pictures. And I keep turning off my camera after pretty much every picture. And now the battery symbol is blinking red here. So it's pretty much done. It's not great. After about 109 pictures, not about exactly 109 pictures. So with this camera, you'll definitely want a spare battery or maybe two with you, even on a short photo walk like what I've done today. It was a good photo walk today, but it could have been a great photo walk. The weather is gorgeous, the light is beautiful, and I like this camera, but the battery life is miserable. Now when I think about it, maybe, just maybe the battery was not completely 100% charged when I left home, but the battery sign on the screen showed full uh, charge. So it must have been almost full at least. And even if it was only half full, I should easily be able to get more than 109 pictures. But 
Other than that, I think this is a really nice camera. It's in a very good price point. In the US, I think the price is around 1500 US dollars. Here in Europe, slightly more because our taxes, uh, taxes, our prices include the sales tax or VAT. And that price puts a lot of pressure on some smaller format cameras in that same price range. Not that the the bigger full frame sensor is always better, of course, but it's a good selling point, selling argument anyway. Well, I have to cut short my photo walk because of the dead battery in this camera. I hope you still enjoyed this little walk with me and the Canon R8. If you found this interesting, entertaining or helpful, please do consider buying me a cup of coffee. There's a link down below for that. If you don't live in Finland, thanks. I'll see you in the next one.